question for the second speaker. Uh, do you uh, have you done any nominee? Have you seen any in Jongan building? Uh, have you done the Tamisani Nanime Tati Nasi for Shogun building or just only the response factor? Uh, I have done the Tamisani Nanime Tati Nasi for Shogun building or just only the response factor? Uh, I have done the Tamisani Nanime Tati Nasi for Shogun building or just only the response factor? Yeah, that's right. And the second question is for the damping ratio of the wind. Why the damping ratio of the 50 year percent period? Is equal to the hundred year return rate of three percent. The other question is this: the wind of the wind of this storm of this. Why is it that the fifty year period of the wind of this storm and the hundred year is the same? I can answer that question on behalf of Sultan Mazari. Typically, for IDC core, the the wind we design wind pressure is based on fifty years. The occurrence of the wind. In the case of the concrete building, we go with a class section, so damping is up to three percent. If you go with a steel, it could be you know one percent or two percent. So three percent for fifty is fifty years is fixed. So some countries they like to go with hundred years wind. We still go with three percent damping. Just for the serviceability test, we go with one percent because when the building just open, the building has no cracks still yet. That's subjected to some vibration. So in that case, we go with 1% or even less. Uh, the question is, uh, he can answer this question. He said, for 50 years and 100 years, the wind is 50% of the wind. Because he said, 对于这种啊，除非是这个啊墙壁有裂缝的这样的建筑的话，它这个系数会是在百分之一，那就封的这个系数。那对于其他来说，好像都是百分之三，我不知道我可以理解的，啊，对对不对？对，就是说，因为五十年到一百年呢，因为它在一个很大的风和点作用下，它基本上结构会出现很多的约微裂缝，所以它的耗能性能呢会相对比较大。但是五十跟一百呢，可能差距不会太大，所以基本上百分之三。然后那个好，而且就是说，就是说，对于这个十年或者一年的这种风和日下，因为它是一个长域的这个状态，所以它结构上的这个裂缝的发展呢，不是那么严重，所以它的耗能性能相对来说呢就比较小，啊，所以基本上也就是百分之一，对吧？百分之一的这个，我实在是不太清so high-rise building, the damping issue is very hot topic because it's hard to measure because you cannot measure a real damping for a 100 or 30 million just based on some limited study. So a tall building normally is damping around like 1% or 2% normally, normal concept. One, sometimes one, sometimes even say 0.5%. Correct, yeah. but never two. Yeah, but you have to combine all the things together and then you, because you have to, in China, they have a very stringent uh, storage group to hold them. Well, the back country, normally the young other code. Uh, uh, so that's why you have to work them together. In China, in their code, they say is as a seismic or wind, when you check the strength, can you use them? Four percent damping because this one traditionally is from concrete structure. Everyone agrees the five percent, mm -hmm. and uh, you know this one put some steel there a little close to the stru steel structure, so they put a uh, eventually have to put a number so uh, put four percent. Yes. Yeah, but uh, when you check the drill, you will see that check the com uh, comfortability, and uh, in the wind tunnel before they will tell you it's a one percent, two percent still kind of demand with our typical industry uh, standard, but uh, when you're talking about the drift, a couple of strains, you have to, if, 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 if you choose to use a code, you have to use it consistently. So you, when you're using China code, they allow you to give code specified 4% damping when you check the strength. So that's, uh, but uh, when you check 50 years, so normally they are using 2% damping. So I mean, still, and also they have consider they have maybe some uh, argument, 50 years, and still 1% by using but don't forget, 2% maybe give you a little smaller miller, but they are strength, 
the story drift is very strange. Uh, that's why you know this uh, whole whole thing you know, might might as well. When when you established the building period, uh, did you consider the foundation system or not? 在设计这个房子的周期的时候，你有没有考虑到这个基础的这个？是。Actually, uh, we do consider the uncertainty on the structural period. Uh, actually, we we all know that the calculated period is quite different from the uh, measure, measure, the real build period measure from the new building. The, there's many uh, uncertainties. For the uh, first thing is about the. Uh, the uh, the impact of foundation system, and secondly, the, about the the impact of uh, secondary structures, for example, the partition walls, and also thirdly, about maybe there's also many uncertainties uh, in the structural uh, models. Uh, so, uh, commonly we use a period reduction factor uh, to consider the the impact of those uncertainties, but. Uh, Actually, the in, in consideration of foundation will uh, will increase uh, will increase uh, the building. Uh, it's uh, half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will increase the building period. Yeah, but, uh, for considering this, <coughs> uh, we commonly use a, a model which can uh, include uh, we call it in integrated model. The model will uh, include the foundation and, fa uh, uh, and also basement and also. The upper structure. Uh, we, if we use this kind of model, we can find that uh, the period will be longer if we we don't consider the the the, the basement and the foundation. But actually, the, there is uh, some uh, design uh, design limits. Uh, you know, for example, the minimum base shear. The 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 we, we uh, the the overall base shear will, will be. Uh, not less than, for example, uh, one percent the, the the overall uh, building weight. So the include uh, including of the uh, longer period, maybe will not uh, <coughs> change the final desired results. So I think that that's the point. So uh, from what I understand, there's some use of period reduction factors depending on the intensity of the event. Right. Whether it's free plant water or air. Um, so, what you were saying was that these reduction factors include the effect of um, cracking in the concrete modules, for example. And uh, I guess my question is that because this is a composite, so the, the core wall system is composite steel and concrete, and also the mega columns are composite as well. Um, my question was, is there any standard to, for reference that you guys use in order to estimate the degree of fracking um, for a stiffness? Uh, so uh, I'm not quite clear. You, 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 ma you mentioned the period reduction or the stiffness reduction. Right. So I guess in one of the slides it was showing um, period reduction factors. Uh, period reduction. Right. Depending on the intensity of the events that we're uh, Examining, I guess the question is, um, did in your model, did you explicitly try to maybe um, assume some stiffness modifier, like uh, to reflect the degree of cracking in the concrete, or is it just reflected in the uh, period production factors? Yeah, actually, I know there is a stiffness reduction factor for the. Uh, concrete buildings, in maybe in, in IBC code, I'm not quite sure, maybe the power the Yeah, it's uh, maybe 85% or something like that. But I think there's no such uh, factor in Chinese code, the corresponding one. But uh, as you said, we, we commonly use uh, maybe the period reduction factor to consider the impact of the the, the different, uh, you know, the, the crack or something, actually the, the real Increase the stiffness. So I think sometimes you know the uh, commonly I'm not think maybe how the yeah, yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's good question. It's, it's two yeah. things. Yeah. It's totally different thing. And also they are in the opposite side. The one they, in China they have a building reduction factor. They say the, the logic behind this. They try to think non-structure element. 
because when you do model all the all the structure elements, you ignore the non-structure elements, but they tend to make the building stiffer, right? The, the stiffer the building, then normally again you using the spectral analysis, you get la larger forces, larger forces. So the code gave you this, try to make sure that you don't you don't uh, lower estimate the size of the forces. But uh, all the the structure are the one you're talking about the reduction factor for the strains or stiffness for the concrete structure, because that one is the, the other opposite. So it will make the size of forces smaller because your your crack your structure element, the building period become longer. So they are two com completely different things. The logic behind that is uh, in US code, they still say it's normally believed in the render size for the concrete crack, especially the new beam or some wall or crack. So normally without where detailed calculation they give you a recommended value. For example, the DP is 0.35. But the, you need to times your to reduce the uh, stiffness of the DP by quite a lot. Mm -hmm. But the wall normally people are allowed to use 0.7, 0.7 without too much uh, evaluation. Mm -hmm. But for window, they have acknowledged that window a lot of time is crack is more minor, and also the, the strength reduction is very minor. So. Is that code allow you when you check the window, you need times back 1.4. So 0.5 times 0.7 times 1.4 almost gives you back to original to one. Yeah. But the leaf beam will not even 0.35 times 1.4 still get a 0.7 that range. Mm -hmm. So this one behind that's all the logic behind this. So hopefully I'm answering answer your question. Uh, performance design, yeah, we can, you can use it if you have a model using performance design. Some engineers try to do better job, mm -hmm. say, hey, I will really check the concrete, whether it's cracked or not cracked. And based on this, I will apply the factor in you know, my elastic analysis. But this one will be pretty, very detailed analysis. So uh, in, in the real world, most of engineers do use it using, either you are using your engineer in the US, you tend to use the API, to, so when you check your model in China, we, because you, meet, you need to meet the reverse strain requirement from, from the, uh, the stiffness, the drift ratio, you tend to using their factor. But one, one, one thing I want to point out, even the building period, when you, it's related to mass, right, and the right. stiffness. The mass calculation in the US, the definition of the mass and the source, they, they, that is normally they don't include the live load, or they, right. they will include real life. Mm -hmm. Real life load, maybe only 20% of the live load you need to design. But in China, default, you have to include 50% of the live load as uh, your, mm -hmm. your, your mass source. So all this one, when you design or building, you need to choose which system, and also you know what the logic behind that. Thank you. Uh, two questions. First one should be easy. Uh, what is the slab system inside the 60, 16 grid co core? And the other one is when you are selecting, optimizing your mega columns and core design, have you talked to any construction guy to see from the builder point of view, from the constructability point of view, which one should be easier? Because they might affect the cycle time because you have more than 100 stories to build. And if every story, every floor will save you one day or two, it save you three months. Uh, actually, finally, uh, the design team use a uh, uh, flat, uh, uh, flat slab uh, 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 provide sheet, sheet uh, composite floor inside the core. So actually, the same with uh, those uh, gravity system outside the core. This is for the, for the first question. Uh, for the second one, actually, the construction uh, 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 issues. Uh, has to be considered during the design of the, the embedded steel in the uh, composite uh, columns. Actually, there's many aspects. Firstly, about the, the lifting, the, the lifting, the, the, the lifting capacity. Uh, uh, secondly, about the welding, the welding, and uh, uh, thirdly, is about the, the concrete powering. Actually, we have to consider the maybe the, the use for the concrete powering. And uh, the, for the fourth aspect, uh, we have to consider the, actually the, the testing, the, the te testing of both uh, the steel and both uh, concrete, uh, especially if we use a uh, box uh, uh, type uh, this embedded steel. 
And uh, actually, finally, uh, uh, the design team used uh, op open uh, steel plates, actually no box uh, in, in the, for the embedded steel. So uh, we think that the first three is actually easy for the concrete powering. Uh, secondly, also very uh, uh, easy for the, uh, the testing and uh, also for the uh, installation of the different steel plates, uh, it's also quite easy. So. I mean, that's the all the considerations. Maybe the power has some... <laughs> yeah, to, to just want to add a few points. Yeah. If we inside the core, I, I, I answer your question correctly, if I answer your question correctly. You are worried about this, uh, you know, the speed of construction will be delayed if I using the, uh, using the composite slab system in the core, right? That's the one thing you but uh, was this building is really super tall, and also it, it will be the tallest building when they come built. So it also have a very soft uh, soil. So the one biggest is tough challenge. We have to make the <coughs> system work. So no matter we we have a big goal is trying to reduce the weight. So that's why we inside the core we put the uh, we still using the composite uh, structure system instead of using concrete structure system. So. And also for construction speed, normally it is not controlled by this uh, constructor core. It's, it's a, the main problem is the, the parameter steel, the, all the erection of the steel. So that one is the bottleneck. And you, everyone knows that the construction of the core is they normally need the, the construction of the parameter by, a, by a, quite a, a, you know, ahead of time. So, and uh, the other question you've answered about, asked about the why we're using the box being box, uh, uh, box composite steel inside the super column that you can buy a black ledge. I think that Mr. Chow already gave a really good uh, answer right here. So, thank you. <coughs> one more question with the uh, footings, foundations, 110 meter uh, drill piles and reinforce. How did you splice the bars and how do you make sure they don't bend over and uh, did you keep the casing in, like, or, or, or is it, was it the case pile, or, or tell us a bit more about the, the, the piles you drill? Uh, yeah, but, but this one, you know, this is construction uh, question. So, in, in this uh, drill pile or four pile construction, China they have built uh, you know, so many four buildings in this uh, in this area. So from China center, and I think before that uh, they already have a very <coughs> secure construction control. They all can, the, the length of the pile, they now they can reach 100 meter. And uh, they also do the test pile, and uh, the, the quality is pretty good. They can, they can maintain that uh, quality. So, this is uh, more like a construction uh, issue. So, structure, you know, we just do the regular supplies. And, and, uh, and also, we have a set of limit for the you know, plumb, the plumb is checked, but it's uh, now over 300, about well, 600. In Shanghai, we even, we, at the beginning, we say it's 160. Well, over 600, but in the real world, they can reach well over 300. So, the I mean, the general uh, construction, the improvement of construction management or quality makes it possible. I'm sure that you, you, you guys have done the uh, roof effect for the power. So, um, curious that what is the total settlement that when it's within the field, and then what is the differential settlement ratio? Uh, actually, we, we do many uh, analysis about the foundation segment, and uh, for this uh, building, the overall segment is uh, about uh, uh, about ten uh, ten centimeters. Uh, I think that is uh, overall speaking is under the core walls. Uh, for the differential segment, maybe uh, according to the analysis result, it's uh, between the core wall and the mega columns, it's about two to three centimeters. Actually, we, we also we also uh, did a lot of uh, 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 actually real uh, settlement uh, 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 records in the Shanghai Tower project. Until now, actually, it's uh, the structure is topped off last year. Uh, by the end of the last year, the overall settlement uh, under the core is uh, eight, about eight eight centimeters, and uh, the differential settlement is about. Uh, uh, also about three centimeters between the center of the core and uh, the center of the of the mega column. It's about uh, maybe two to three centimeters. Different columns will have different uh, 
uh, differential settlements that uh, yeah, of the settlement with the use of outrigger and bell truss from seismic design philosophy or principle um, for a rare event earthquake event do you expect the outrigger and the bell truss to yield to uh, to go into the inelastic region or do you design it to have some overstrength uh, capacity uh, actually, the for for the outrig, uh, we uh, the design team use uh, performance objective. We call it uh, uh, actually no yielding mm -hmm. under moderate earthquake. Uh, that means if uh, the earthquake level is about uh, above moderate uh, earthquake, actually it will uh, aspect to uh, yield, but uh, it's not necessary to yield. Uh, for the uh, fail charts. Uh, the the uh, design team use uh, we call it uh, the the remain elastic under moderate ela elastic mm -hmm. the moderate earthquake. That means uh, 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 for moderate earthquake it, it will be no no yielding actually remain el elastic. But above the moderate earthquake, uh, it will it will also, uh, maybe will be yielding, but uh, it's not necessary to be At actually according to the. Time history analysis result, uh, the nonlinear time, time history analysis result uh, uh, under the rare earthquake, uh, we can find that uh, actually some there 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 uh, is some uh, yielding in the R rigors, but uh, most of the R uh, bell charts actually also may <laughs> remain elastic even mm -hmm. under rare earthquake. So the that's actually it's, it's different between the. The performance objective and the, the final analysis results. Yeah. So, so, okay. Maybe may power. Yeah. Well, sometimes we so let them yield just for the lecture only, but make sure the yeah. shear is still in remaining elastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because shear shear failure is is, is yes. a, a, a for fragile. Right. Yeah. Performance of uh, the outrigger still is uh, there's no consensus in the engineer community for now. Basically, the trust that you're looking at is they have diagonal. Basically, they do as more like a you know beam. Basically, they want to if you understand the, the function of the arriga, basically they need to subject a huge shear, vertical shear here, not horizontal shear. So it's more like you know it's not the a real like a brace system. You know the brace system you know is more like the, the diagonal take off of the horizontal shear, but this one is more like the vertical shear. So it's good. If they can absorb some, have show some yielding and show some uh, uh, flexibility, can absorb the, the forces. Uh, in China, because they have very stringent uh, stiffness requirements, so at the frequency stage, you know, you have to meet the code requirement. So normally, by doing this, uh, all rigor tends to be pretty steep. So um, uh, that we put it into the nonlinear analysis or you know under the frequent under the moderate seismic or even under the severe seismic. So normally you will see very little uh, yielding in or nonlinear behavior under the severe seismic. But uh, all this analysis is just analysis, right? Mm -hmm. So you based on the code requirement you, you, you pick some some seismic record or then that one meets some check uh, meet some code requirement but but in the real world, you don't know that real seismic will look like. But there may be, you know, the size, the real seismic earthquake will higher than the specification you designed for. So that time, yes, that time, the algorithm, if they can absorb some kind of energy, will be, that, that's our goal. So we want to design that way. But a lot of time, if the China can, oh, they don't have that very stringent diffraction requirement, then we will, uh, our goal is to make them more flexible. Regarding the modeling of the pi system and also the map function in, in your integrated model, uh, how do you get the pi feedback and uh, the pi feedback from what I understand it will be very due to the load uh, <coughs> Are you wary of the pi feedback? For each combination, or you just assume 
just one I stick it value and use for all them. And another thing is that your password should be is considering the long term certain method you just said 10 centimeters in the center of the core, 2 centimeters uh, different between the core and the column. Or your pi signal is just only the chapter pi for the wind and transmit. Okay. Actually, uh, two questions. Uh, for the first question, uh, actually, uh, we, we do have the pi stiffness. Actually, but uh, commonly the pi stiffness is from the geotechnical mm -hmm. consultant. <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, maybe I, I think the, the basic uh, idea below uh, behind the uh, pi stiffness is that uh, uh, we can calculate the stiffness from the, the settlement and uh, the, the, the pi reaction. But that is under the, the, the a long term settlement. That means it's, it's not uh, some settlement during the construction or during operation. It, it, it is a final settlement uh, of the overall building. Uh, uh, actually, uh, from the settlement and also from the uh, higher reactions, you can get the uh, stiffness. But maybe I'm not quite familiar with that. That is a ge geotechnical, uh, maybe the, the consultants. But, but yeah. in, your, in your model? Yeah, in, your, in our model, we, we obtain the higher stiffness, stiffness. All the stiffness uh, uh, provided by geotechnical consultants. Just only one single. Uh, actually, yeah, that is for uh, the, your second question. You, you mentioned that actually the stiffness will change. Uh, it's actually nonlinear, I think, and also time dependent. Yeah. It, it, it's nonlinear and also time dependent. It, it will change with, uh, for example, the reaction force of the pi, and also it will change uh, with, uh, with the time. Yeah, <laughs> you know, during. Uh, Construction and during the operation stage, different stage will have different maybe sediment or different relationship between the sediment and the reactions. So uh, uh, we do have some research on the time dependent effects about uh, both foundation and uh, also upper structure because uh, differential sediment of the foundation will also change the internal forces of the structural members. For example, our rigors. Different uh, stage, you will have different uh, internal force in, in the R rigors, even in the R rigors, because the differential sediment is uh, always changing during our operation stage. So, okay. Uh, I cannot I cannot speak for this specific projects, but generally for tall buildings, we get three sets of the pile stiffness from geotechnical engineers because they give us upper bound and low bound stiffness. Usually, low bound is like half of upper bound because they don't know, like you know, there's, there's so many, so much uncertainties with your soil foundation. So they give you low bound and upper bound. You you know, with the upper bound, the pile is very stiff. So if any force coming in, pile will absorb everything instead of spread it to the adjacent base. So for the pile design, we use upper bound and use low bound, assuming that load has to spread apart that has great impact on your map foundation design, so we use low bound for that. And also we're getting um, dynamic properties, because dynamic properties usually double of your upper bound. Using that upper bound, uh, no, that upper bound, sometimes they don't give it to you, then we just apply right to, which is four times of low bound. Using that, you integrate into your modeling. And once you apply it, usually building period increase by 15%. If we, you use that building period, the wind loading yeah. from the wind tunnel testing will be increased by 30%, sometimes even 40% as well. So yeah. you have to be very wise when you do tall buildings. You never neglect the foundation. Yeah. You have to integrate together. Can you just build an envelope cable for your method process? Uh, yes, in a way, because again, when I say, um, for your pile design, use this, or, you know, so gravity design, you gotta use certain set of the stiffness. Right, so you could be very conservative, although you could be wise enough to play with the numbers.
。现在是这样，就是说，我们呢，其实这个论文可能写的还是相对比较早的。那个时候呢，实际上，呃，我们那个现那个时候还是风要稍微大一点啊，就基于简历的话。但是后来呢，因为可能风也是做了一些折讲，所以最后现在的这个。可能就是说，因为风和载，因为最新的数据好像是风和载要，就是呃一百年的风和载吧，可能可能要比这个，要比这个五十年的风和呃五十年的地震风可能还还要小一些，就是，啊、呃，但是现在这个这个就很难确定，因为这个里面涉及到很多风龙门的一些参数啊，呃，可能包括这个，那、呃、当然包括对这个建筑的体型对吧，还有这个。可能会都会有一些影响，反正现在就是数据是是这样的，风风现在是蛮小，就是总的来说是这么小。专家最熟悉就是，我们最早的风控制度嘛。对，我们最早是风比较大。这个其中很多这里就是这个，按常理说这个就是长周期模式，大家会是地震来控制，或者就是可能我们到时候浙江系数可能选择选择大。呃，最最主要一个呢就是说，呃，它风动。顾问的解释呢，就是因为它周围还有一些高层的建筑，我觉得还蛮高的，所以它是有一定的屏蔽的作用，所以造成它的风险相对而言会比一般的要小一些。再一个呢，就是说你也不能只看地震简历，因为那个，所以都知道，哪怕地震简历，实际上最终的话，对于一个结果来说，最终都是像这种超高层设计嘛，最终可能好多构建呢，它是由地震来控制，不是由小镇来控制。所以呢，实际上就是风现在看上去小一些，实际上也。对结构的整个的安全性的一个比重，就影响性不会那么大，因为好多构件是需要重新控制。第二呢，讲一个点，比如说，还有一个就是一个超高的建筑，它的就是不要只看简历，你要看一下那个就是景观性，像景观性非常重要。这个这个地就风下的地震的这个就是这个、哦、这个景观性很重要啊。还有还有提问吗？你问一个问题，嗯，嗯 ，I have a final question. Uh, in your specification, when you design the the building <coughs> for Auriga Four, do you require a delay connection? Uh, that means that when you you can only connect the Auriga when the floor above between this current Auriga Four and the next bare trusses has been fully constructed, then you do the final connection. Yeah, actually, it's, it's a very important issue about the design of our rigors. Uh, as we say, the differential uh, shortening the, between the core, uh, core wall and uh, the columns will introduce uh, secondary forces in the our rigors. So commonly, the, the, the our, we will commonly uh, <coughs> specify that the, the, the locking of the our rigor will be, will be post, postponed to be maybe, but the, the Ideal uh, time is to, for example, uh, upon the structure top up, that the uh, secondary forces will be reduced uh, to minimum. But uh, actually, we also have to consider the contribution of our rigors because it's uh, maybe uh, contribute uh, 20 to 30 percent of the overall stiffness. So, uh, because uh, the construction period of the super top building company is quite long maybe five years or even uh, more. Uh, so we have to also consider the stiffness and the stability of the uh, tower during the construction phase. If, if the, the, the lock-in time is uh, quite late, so maybe the stiffness or the st uh, stability of the building cannot be uh, actually satisfied maybe during the construction phase. So, and also there's some other uh, issues with this topic. For example, the, uh, the installation, maybe the, the MEP uh, uh, facilities, they also require that uh, uh, maybe all the partition walls will be, will be constructed. And you have to finish the, the lock-in <laughs> sometimes. Uh, so, uh, uh, um, uh, this the, the final login scheme for this project, I think it's not, not yet to determine. But uh, for the Shanghai Power project, uh, the login scheme is that uh, uh, with the finish of the last uh, the, the construction of the last uh, uh, all rig lever, 
uh, 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 with with uh, uh, actually the origin will be locked locked in uh, upon the completion of the origin of the upper uh, level. So that's uh, the final thing. It's also a comprehensive uh, uh, topic. So.